Christ, and at this very moment, the one that stands out to me was when the centurion stood by the cross and he said, surely this must be the Son of God. Amen. Listen to this song as we sing it this morning. We pray that if you don't know him, you come to know him today as your personal Savior. Bye. 
This next song is going to take us to Calvary. Uh, today we just feel the need to share this message with you. Uh, it's simply called, I believe, in a hill called Mount Calvary. say you know uh, I'm thankful for Jesus Amen. there's somebody here today that has a tremendous need and I don't know who you are but you've hid it and you've masked it and you've tried to make cameo appearances in this life but Jesus wants to use you in a mighty way Amen. if you'll just be obedient. Amen. Sing this with us. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It's sad. Yeah. 
you love him, won't you lift both hands straight up in the air? We'll worship him today. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Why? Because he first loved me. We want the choir to stay up here. We want Shelly and Sydney to walk out here with me. We're going to sing a happy song. It's called Damascus Road. If you know it, you sing it with us. The choir is going to sing it with us. be dismissed to go downstairs and uh, we're just so thankful that you're here today. Damascus Road, see if you remember your trip. about you, but I came here this morning feeling like that yellow mic. Uh, I had some some juice, but just enough to make a crackle, amen, but then I got in my office, and, and the Lord and I had a conversation, and, uh, and then I stopped talking, and he started talking, and then I felt a little bit better, amen, and then the next thing you know, I come in here, and, and, and it went from being hooked into 120 to, to what, 480, and now I'm pretty fired up, amen. Amen. I'm excited uh, for today's service. I'm excited for uh, what God is doing here, and uh, the uh, the we got a baptism service after, and I'm excited about that. 
uh, and, and I mean, I'm telling you, this is this is uh, going to be a good day here at Truth Baptist Church. Um, uh, I preached a, service, a sermon a couple of uh, weeks ago at our recovery church. Um, we have an addiction ministry called True Freedom here. If you didn't know that, now you know. Um, and uh, uh, once a month, we have a, a church service just dedicated to those that are, uh, I mean, it's open to everybody, but we dedicate it to those that are uh, going through, long, uh, through recovery, and we call it Recovery Church. And we have, uh, we, um, we sing and, uh, have, ha- and glorify God, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, we need to step our game up in worship because those who are coming out of reco- or coming in recovery ain't afraid to shout, amen. And I and I, I like I've been telling them, come to come to we're gonna bust you guys in on Sunday morning. We need a pickup, amen. And then, um, but then I then I open up the Bible and, and I preach a, um, a, a a sermon. And the Lord laid it on my heart to preach on uh, uh, in out of Matthew chapter twenty six. And that's where we're going to be tonight, or this morning, because uh, uh, out of that sermon came a series. I like when God does that, it makes it easier on me, uh, but he, he, he kind of spoke to my heart and, and gave me this, uh, this series, and I'm only going to cover one point at a time uh, over the next three weeks, because I feel like um, everybody, everybody needs to hear uh, this story in this uh, in this capacity, um, uh, and uh, I can, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I don't know how to start it, so I'm just going to start it with the same way I started that. So if you were here that night, uh, you just you just pretend that you uh, that this is the first time you've heard this story. All right, um, I uh, I was working as an elevator man. See now we started uh, working out as an elevator man in uh, in Parkersburg. And uh, we were working at Parkersburg South High School, and, and we had to get some parts. So uh, the only part place that was open at the time uh, that would facilitate our needs was Lowe's. So we went to the, the Lowe's. And we got so much stuff that the, that the little chintzy bags that they give you wouldn't work out. So they gave us a box. What a blessing. So I don't know if you, you, you know this, but I like to talk a little bit. And um, I'm not rude, so I look at who I'm talking to. Amen. That, amen. Pass that advice on. You look who, you, who you're talking to. Look them in the eyes. <laughs> they might think you're honest for once. Um, <laughs> sorry. I felt like I was at recovery church where I could be honest. Um, but I forgot I'm talking to Baptist this morning. Uh, so I'm carrying this box. And, uh, and I'm talking, and my buddy, he's an Ohio State, uh, 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 Ohio State football fan, and he thinks that they're the only team in the whole country, and he's telling me how much better they are than everybody else, and, and I'm sitting here with the, uh, as a fighting Irish fan and a WVU fan, and, and I got all this history behind me, and he's a Buckeye. He's just hitting me with all this Buckeye stuff, and I'm just, man, I just want to tell him. So finally, I get up enough ur- urge to tell it, you know. Yeah. And I look at him, I go to tell him, and I'm carrying a box. And I'm not seeing where I'm going to take my next step. So I did what uh, uh, many of us do. I take a step without looking. And thinking that my leg is going to hit uh, the, the ground... I missed the transition and the athlete that I am. The, the fast twitching muscles took over and, and the, you know, I'm an upside down weevil wobble anyway. So I, I began to try to correct my step. And because uh, I missed and stepped over the curb and I began to stumble forward. And as I'm stumbling forward, I did that long fall. Have y'all ever experienced a long fall where you just keep continuously falling? By the time I end the process of falling, everybody in the, in the, whole, play, uh, the, whole, um, the, the whole parking lot is now looking at me. I fall on my face. The box goes into the air. 
everything that was in the box is flying also into the air and I've got some over here and some over here and some over there and, 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 and I'm laying on my face with parts everywhere and the dude I'm with finally stops talking about Ohio State. He says, make sure you pick all that up and left me. And here I am left alone to pick up everything that I had neatly in the box because when I took a step without looking, I fell. And I wonder if there's anybody under the sound of my voice who has ever stopped looking where they're going and started assuming that they were going in the right direction and missed the transition in their life. And when they missed the transition, it led to them in this course of falling continuously. And when they fell, everything that was nice and neat in their life began to fly in the air. And over here is some of you, and over there is some of you, and over there is some of you. And the friend that you were so adamant that was going to be with you until the end is in the truck started on their way back to work while you're picking up the pieces of yourself. You see, that's where we find we pick up Peter. Now, we, we, we got to do some background work. we got to lay some things out. But we find Peter takes a transition in his life. He misses it. He falls flat on his face. And he finds that he's in major crisis. Look, if you don't mind standing for the reading of God's Word, if you can, if you can't, just sit right there and we're just going to stand for the reverence of God's Word. And verse number 33. Let's just look at verse number 31. The Bible says, Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. Now look what Peter Peter done opened his mouth again. He said, uh, he answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never. Ooh, that's a big word, isn't it? Five letters. What a bold statement. I never. Uh, Yet will I never be offended. And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, that, that, that this night before the cock crows, thou shalt deny me thrice. Then Peter said again, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny it, deny thee likewise also said to all the disciples. Now we want to hit the fast forward button on your television and go to verse 58. Notice, the Bible says this, but Peter followed afar off off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Did you see that? To see the end. Look now at verse number 69. Fast forward and again. Now Peter sat uh, without in the palace. And a damsel came unto him saying, Thou art, or thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out unto the porch, Another maid saw him and said unto them that were, that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know this ma- the man. And after a while came unto him uh, they that stood by and said, uh, said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them. For thy speech bereath thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew and Peter remembered. 
What he remembered sent his life into a course, a spinning course, and where everything that was in his box would start flying all around. And the Bible says that he went out and wept bitterly. Now I want you to turn to the Gospel of John chapter 21 real quick. You can trust Jason, he'll put it on the screen. Verse number 3. Just want to read one verse. Life in the spin. <laughs> Peter saith unto them, I go fishing. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us. Lord, I ask you, God, that you to help me th this morning to preach your word in a way that is pleasing to you, Lord, that, that your kingdom may be uh, that, that your kingdom may be advanced and that your that glory may come to you and not me. Lord, I pray for all of those that are in this room that we came for the right reason. That's to grow in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you'd empty me of self and sin. Fill me today with, with the Spirit, Lord. I pray, God, that you would, you would help me to preach your word because it's the Super Bowl. And I pray that together we leave, no doubt. For it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. And you may be seated. We find that Peter is the, is the pro, pro, not predominant figure here. And, and we ask the question, who really is Peter? And to know who Peter was, we have to go to where he first began to show up in the Scriptures. And we find that he was a fisherman. Yes, he, his identity was shaped by what he did. Did you hear that? He was, his identity was shaped by what he did. Many of us are in, in this room. We'll, we'll, when somebody asks who we are, they'll start with what they do. Amen? I am a teacher. I am a mechanic. I am a, <laughs> I am a CEO of a large conglomerate. Anybody? Nobody? No, no one? <laughs> All right. I was trying to find you. <laughs> We've got projects for you to do. <laughs> We're trying to get a new building. We were going to ask you to help us there. But you ain't here today. Maybe next Sunday. Uh, but he was, he was, he's a fisherman. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying he, he did what fishermen do every day of his life. He, he got out of bed. He, he made sure that his nets were mended, that there was no holes in it. He went to the boat and he took the net with him. He got on the boat and he made sure that the boat would go out into the water. And he'd go out in the midst of the water and he'd throw the net out there and he would fish. He would pull fish in. Amen. So he was a fisherman. That was his job. So when somebody asked him what he did, he said, I, or who he was, he said, I'm a fisherman. He knew exactly who he was until he met a man named Jesus who changed everything about him. And he, 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 he then became identified by what he did. Again, what did he do? He was, he was a follower of Jesus. So what is a follower of Jesus? He was a disciple. So for, three, for over three years he followed Jesus as a disciple defined by being a follower of Jesus. So everywhere that he went he was identified with the man who was, who was uh, making people a uh, lame man to wa walk again and those that were blind to see. He was identified with Jesus, the miracle man, the one who could walk on water. He was, he was seen with Jesus. He must be a part of them. So we find him now in an identity crisis. Because the one that he followed, who was, who was sought out for, has now been led away in chains. The Bible says that he began to follow afar off. You, you want me to tell you what the coronavirus did for this country? It showed us... Who would follow afar off? And gave convenience to those who were washed by a fire. <laughs> Y'all don't like it when I go there. Hey, you're in the building today. Be happy. I ain't talking about you. Well, okay. He said it. I, I agree. Um. <laughs> you see, he was, had to make a decision. Now, 
And so he follows afar off and he has to make decisions that would be drastically significant to his life. So he began by following afar off. And by following afar off, he began the slippery slope of what now would be the rest of his life. Unless something happened. The Bible tells us that Jesus was taken in and Peter remained outside. I'll follow you even unto death, Jesus. But he's hanging outside. Mm -hmm. And then he he got a little chilly. Amen. Because I found this to be true. And and this, you you take it if you want to. This may be a a drastic pull. But I found those who who follow Jesus afar off. And when Jesus goes inside and you stay outside, the fire is absent from your life. So you begin to seek warmth in other areas. Because you're cold. Is this going to be one of them sermons? I will say this. I am having a great time this morning. (laughs) You see, if you allow yourself to hang out long enough in a cold situation, you'll always look for a warm fire. So he looks around and he sees the warmth of the fire and how it was inviting and how it was was something that was to be desired on such a cold night. So he said, uh, it won't hurt anything if I go over there and I warm myself by this foreign fire. And he stands there and he puts his hands around the uh, and he begins to rub and he he begins to stick his hands out and maybe he does with us uh, what what, what we like to do is we turn our backs to the fire and we sway back and forth. Y'all don't do that. It feel good, try it. But he, he, he began to sit there and he, he, he began to warm himself by a fire and that choice led to another choice. They said, oh, whoa, I remember you. And they identified him by his former identity because they recognized who he was identified with. They said, aren't you one of those who hung out with Jesus? No, nah, not me. Nope, not me. Can't tell you. That. Don't even know the guy. Why are you here? I mean, <laughs> you know this that by that fire weren't people who were disciples of Jesus. Matter of fact, these people were there for a show. Some of these people were there for for the simple fact that they wanted to see somebody get crucified. Some of these people were there for the simple fact that they were tired of hearing about Jesus and they wanted to make sure that, mm, that, that they ended it. And some of these people were tools of the devil to make it all happen. And now he's warming himself by a fire with a bunch of people who's against the one person who said, I will make you fishers of men. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying this. He began to warm himself. Then he denied Jesus. And then they said, said, no, 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 no. No, your speech, you know, you you, you talk differently than everybody else around here. You see, if you hang out with Jesus long enough, you'll begin to talk like Jesus. Amen? And you will be identified with Jesus. And they said, your your voice is given away. You've got something in there that's a little bit different than everybody else. And then he got down on their level. He dropped some words that some of you only do when you get hit with a hammer. Y'all think we don't know? Or when some minute somebody in a Mary Kay fan pulls over in front of you in the fast lane. Soccer ball on the back, it says Tanner. He said, I don't know him. Explicit, explicit, explicit. You say, what is taking place here? He has now come apart. His identity unraveled right then and there in the midst of the flames. He unraveled. And the Bible says that it was then that this little chicken preached a sermon to him. And he remembered I like to do that because it makes me feel like Peter Pan. (laughs) The Bible says, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus 
which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times thrice. And he went out. The Bible says he wept bitterly. Luke said it like this in Luke chapter 22, verse 61 and 62. He said, And the Lord turned and looked at Peter upon Peter. Man, what kind of eye-piercing contact that would have been to see the depths of your soul. The Bible says, and he remembered the words of the Lord. And how that he had said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me three thrice. And Peter went out and Luke confirmed that he wept bitterly. Oh, he denied him. Now his heart is bitter. He's left trying to figure out who he is now. He, yeah. Who, who am I? The Bible doesn't say that he was anywhere else. It does record that some of the disciples were at the crucifixion, but they didn't name them. We know that John was there because John was, was given Mary as another mother. Another mother from another brother. <laughs> and then, sorry, if y'all live up here, y'all know how twisted it is, all right? He, uh, we know that he was there and, and, and that, that they were found together a lot. So there could be that Peter was there or he could have been in the upper room hiding out. The Bible says that, 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 that Jesus then appeared and and showed himself to the ladies, and then he then then it's recorded that somehow he, he showed himself to Peter, and now and then they're hanging out in the in the upper room, and and he shows himself to to the whole group of them, and then uh, Thomas was hanging out at home watching t uh, watching the, the the early football game, it man in London, and uh, eating nachos for breakfast, and so Thomas wasn't there. So Jesus had to come back and again he showed himself again. Now here, here it is. Three times Jesus has shown himself. And then John chapter 21 verse 3. Three times he's seen Jesus. Three times he knows of the resurrection. But now he said I'm going fishing. So you're telling me, Jesus said, go up here and hang out and, and I, there's some stuff that I got for you to do and you want to go fishing. You say, well, what happened, that to, what took place, preacher, that what took place there in that moment, uh, uh, he, his life began to fall apart and although he may have seen the resurrected Savior, it does not mean that he, he had changed his falling apart ways and he was looking for something to grab a hold of so he went back to what was familiar to him. He went back to the sea, he got his nets out and he went to fishing. He said, if I've got to pay my own bills now, I've got to have a job to pay my own bills and he listen he began to work his old ways failure always brings you back to your old ways you lost trying to figure it out on your own so he's done right discipleship over our generation would say he's a waste of time. Everybody in our generation get on their Facebook account. They delete him and then talk about him because they got to delete him first so that he doesn't see that they're talking about him. That hasn't happened to you yet. So he fell and he's done. He can no longer preach the gospel. He can no longer stand up and, and be useful into the kingdom of God, can he? No, he fell. Because you only get to fall once. If you fall once, it's over. Brother Mike, if you, if you slip up and make a mistake, the whole thing's for naught. 
Why did you even follow him for three years if you're going to make this mistake as soon as he's absent for five minutes? Right? Discipleship over. Mm -mm. That ain't how he works. No, 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 no. That ain't how he works. In fact, uh, the Bible says that Peter went fishing. And then it said in verse number 5, uh, Jesus saith unto the... Or verse number 4, it says, And when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore side. You see what happened here? God had a recovery plan in place for Peter. He saw that Peter needed an intervention. He wasn't giving up on Peter. Peter may have gave up on him. Peter may have gave up on himself. But Jesus never gave up on him. He said, I'm, I'm willing to go all the way for you. Yes, we find three measures Jesus takes in recovery that will transform Peter's life forever. In the midst of his coming apart, Jesus put it all back together. And each week we're going to discover one of those attributes. You say, preacher, how do, did Jesus transform Peter when everything fell apart? Look at this. In verse number 4, the Bible says that... We, Jesus brings him to a place, not of rejection, but a place of acceptance. Verse 4, it says, And when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore side. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. You say, what's going on here? Jesus was meeting with them. It was meeting time. And this wasn't a garden tomb that he was going to meet with him because the garden tomb was already conquered. Death had no more sting. Oh, the grave had no more victory. Jesus was walking with his nail-pierced hands as the King of kings and Lord of lords. There was no more tomb for Jesus. You say, but then, why? okay, so what about the, the upper room? The... <laughs> Isn't that the place that Jesus commandeered to begin? <laughs> the church movement. No, he began that on the seashore whenever he fried fish the first time. Sorry. I got a little too independent from the middle of King Name Bible believing Baptist for you there. I'll reel it back in. You see, but he, he commandeered this place. And it was like a church, this upper room. It was a place where they would meet and wait. That's it. Meet and wait. And then meet and eat and wait. Ain't nothing like church, is it? <laughs> no, this time, this time he come to the shoreline. A place where men's lives were falling apart. And Jesus met them there. Why there, preacher? Why did Jesus come to this place in the midst of, him, of Peter falling apart and other disciples falling apart? Why is it that he wanted to go to Peter who had rejected him? He went there for a place to show him that even when he rejected Jesus, Jesus was willing to accept him. Oh, yeah. Oh, so here it is. We find what takes place here in this place of acceptance in verse number 9. It begins by saying this, And as soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coal there. Hmm. Oh, did you see that? What did they see? A fire. Now this is just Campbell's Creek theology now. But there is a connection point between... Where Jesus' eyes met with Peter's eyes and, and the little rooster began to crow. And where Jesus' eyes and Peter's eyes would meet again. What was the commonality there? Fire. You say, well, why did he have a fire? Because the last thing he remembers is seeing the fire. Smelling the fire. So he brings him back to the place of the fire. You say, why did he bring him back there? Because, you know, I found this to be true. When Jesus is transforming your life, he always takes you back to the mess that you made. 
Because he can't move forward until he makes the mess a miracle. He said, oh yeah, you see this? You, you see what I did here? Oh, you smell, you, you smell those, those embers, 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 embers. You see amber burning there? <laughs> you smelling what I smell? You remember that last time? And I wonder if there's anybody who's failed today. Well, let me take you back there for just a moment. Everybody in your life left you and you were all alone. But there was still who had, one who had his eyes on you. And you may have rejected him, but he had a plan for you. And he didn't give up. Look at the next, look, look it says, and uh, they say, they saw a fire of coals there. And look, there's an and. I like and. Because it continues on. This is how I knew that Jesus was a man that I would that I would always love. And fish laid there on, and bread. <laughs> that's my that's my dude. <laughs> and it said, and Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which you have caught. Now I need to show you this because I, I just you know it's just like a. Boop. So Jesus said, Jesus has got a fish on the fire and he's got bread on the fire. But, and then he brings the disciples over and, he sets, and, and they're sitting there. But he, he didn't ask them just to come sit. He asked them to bring. You see, Jesus fed 5,000 with some fish, right, and some bread. But he asked the disciples to bring what they caught. You say, why? You ever thought about that? Because Jesus wanted them to know that they got something to bring to the table. Because the devil has a whispering, whispering spirit who whispers Miss Deja in your ear. And he tells you, you ain't got nothing to bring to the table. He likes to get in your eyes and in your mindset and he, he makes you see like he sees. He, he, he talks in your ears and he twists your mind up and makes you think like he thinks. And he, he, makes you, he, he gets in your mouth and he begins to shape your words so that you talk like he does. And he begins to get in your feet and he begins to make you walk like he walks. And you say, what are you getting at, preacher? I'm getting at this. Uh, the devil wants you to be just like him. And how does he do that? By telling you. That you have no things to bring to Jesus. But Jesus said, hey, you have all the potential because I gave you all this potential. You see, they didn't catch that on their own. <laughs> They've been toiling all night long. Jesus said, hey, why don't you just throw it over there on that side and bring it on in with you. So Jesus is the one who gave it to them. I'm going to get into more of this next week, all right? And, and so they're bringing... The fish that Jesus gave them to give so that they could understand that Jesus gave them something that they could now use. And I'm here to tell you this morning, the devil may tell you that you don't have nothing to give, but God gave you the ability, a breath in your body, and everybody under the sound of my voice has potential to do something amazing for God. The Bible goes on. i gotta go. got to go on, all right? It says now, verse number 12. And this is why I'm going on, Brother Seth. <laughs> you with me? This is our favorite verse. You ready? Jesus said, look, look, say it with me. Come and dine. Yeah. Isn't that nice? He, that, that's amazing. That is a blessing. That is something. You say, why are you sitting so pumped up about this? Because not only did Jesus say, I, I'm going to take you back to the past and we're going to overcome your past because you've got something to bring. But what do you got to bring? You've got something to bring to the table. And that not only do you got something to bring to the table, but you've also got a seat at the table. Yeah. Y'all aren't that excited. I got to go in the Old Testament now. If y'all can't get excited about that, I got to go to the Old Testament. All right. Second Samuel chapter number nine tells us about a, a, a man named Mephibosheth. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I like Mephibosheth. I can identify with him. 
The Bible says that he was crippled from a fall. Yeah. It means something happened in his life. If you read the story, he was being carried, and then he got dropped. And whenever you're being carried by anybody but Jesus, there's always a chance of a drop. He got dropped. He, he, he got crippled. Uh, then the Bible says that, that he was hanging out in a place called Lodibar. Now let me break this down for you. The, the word uh, debar means word or thing. The word low means no. So when you put them together, the word Lodibar means a nothing place. A place with no word. Meaning that there is no hope to be found there. There's no chance of sustainable life. You hear that? And this is where he was living. He was crippled, but he had come to grips with his crippled life. He was fine there. He was living in nothing, but he was okay because that was his home. And now he hears word that the king wants to see him. And this wasn't no ordinary king. This was the king that took the place of his great-grandfather. His story was that he had to flee for his life because of fear that the new king was going to destroy him. So he was now in exile in nothing as a cripple. There was no hope for him. So could you imagine the journey back? And as he comes a little bit closer and a little bit closer, as he can see the gates, he begins to think, oh, he's going to make me a slave. He's going he's gonna, he's gonna to intend to make me a slave so that I can live out the rest of my existence as a slave to the king. But then he's going to see my legs. And he's going to see that I'm broken. And that a broken slave is a worthless slave. So it's better that I just be killed. And he says, I'm going to my death. <laughs> but then, they, he, walk, he, he, he begins to, to be taken. Mm. <laughs> He begins to be taken before the king. And he stands there before the king. And he's leaning upon. I, I just imagine they had some makeshift crutches. I don't know what it's going to I don't know what it's. We'll ask him in heaven. Amen. What happened? Uh, uh, <laughs> he may have had some stone wheels on and just rolled on in. I don't know. But, <laughs> but he's in there and he's crippled. And he's, he's sta- I just imagine he's standing there struggling before the king. And he's giving the honor to the king. And, all, and the king begins by saying, uh, uh, mm. <laughs> fear not his whole life was coming to a head right here in front of the king and he and the king looked at him and said that David said fear not for I will surely show thee kindness not for your sakes but for my friend's sake Jonathan thy father's sake and I will restore all the, to restore thee all the land of Saul thy father restore all that was taken from you and thou shalt eat of the bread at my table continuously He was accepted at the king's table. He was now seated beside of all of the king's children. He was beside all of the governors, all of the princes, all of the powers that was all around all of Israel. Here he was seated among them. A broken man from Lodibar was sitting at the king's table and no different than anybody else. You say, why are you so excited this morning? I'm excited because I'm a broke down nobody from Campbell's Creek who met the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and he accepted me for who I am and I can sit now at his table forever and ever and ever you say preacher why are you so excited I'm I'm excited because here I am with him seated just a crippled boy Miss Pam, let me tell you something cool. When I come in all crippled and broken, I see, I see old Solomon there. 
I see. We ain't dealt with Absalom yet. He's there with his dreadlocks. Amen. And I come in. And I say, hey guys, how you doing? And they said, that boy had nothing from Lodi Bar. Stumbling in here again. <laughs> and it's, I find my spot, Brother Jim. That's my chair. Ain't nobody allowed to sit in my chair. I'm right there beside the king. Sit down, slide my little infirmities underneath the king's table. And all of my brokenness is now hid from the world. <laughs> all now they can see is a king's child. And I don't know about you, but I'm sure I'm thankful today that I get to be accepted by the king. Oh, listen, I didn't deserve what I got, but he gave it to me, and he loved me in spite of who I was and all of the chaos that I brought into my life. He changed me when he rewrote my story on the shoreline of my existence. I'm here to tell you, Brother David, he came to change your life. Come and dine <laughs> with every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around. We all have some things that makes us fall apart. Death of a loved one. Falling of a friend. Personal failures, tragedies. They all seem to take the forethought of our mind. We begin to slip. Pieces of us go everywhere. We're left there trying to collect it all on our own, but here he is, Jesus. He showed up in the midst of your Lowe's parking lot. He got out of his truck. And he said, you know what, I can, I can help you pick this up. He showed you acceptance this morning. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'm going to ask you, why not today? I got a message for you. I'm going to preach the gospel in two seconds. Jesus loves you. He cares for you. He bled and died on the cross for you. And he rose again the third day so that you can rise with him. And live a new life. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, would you slip your hand up? Say, preacher, will you pray for me? I'd like to know that my name's written down in heaven. I'd like to know that I'm saved. Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, I know that I'm saved. If Jesus comes or I should die, I'm ready to meet him. Here's my hand. I want to lift it up as a testimony to glorify God today. Here's my hand. Yes, I know I'm saved. Praise God. Maybe some people in, under the sound of my voice will say this, Preacher. You know some things have come apart. And I've missed some transition. But I want to ask you to pray for me that I never forget that I've been accepted by the king. Here's my hand. Amen. Yes. I wonder today how many people will step out of their seat and come down to this altar and call on the king. Tell him how thankful you are that in all of this world he chose you. This one's come. How about you? Yeah, these are coming. Come? Thank you for accepting me. Oh, we got people coming all over. Thank you for caring about me. Thank you for whenever I couldn't come to you, you came to me. These are coming to you. Oh, yes. Yes, people still moving. God's still working. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting. Just as I am for wretched ones, I riches healing of my mind. Yea, all I need is you.
today. I thank you for being so good to us. Man, I sure am glad that you showed up this morning. God, we could see Jesus. We could see how much you did when our lives fell apart to restore us. Lord, I ask you, God, that you'd continue to work in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Lord, we pray that you'd bless the victory service, the baptism service that we have next. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. I do want to remind you of Wednesday night, Thursday night, and we do have Sunday night service tonight. Yes. And uh, we want uh, to make sure that you know all of those are growing points. Amen. Yeah. I believe this, and I'll always say this, and you're going to get annoyed with it, that it takes three to grow. Sunday morning, Sunday night, yes. Wednesday night. You'll grow. And every step, that you, listen, we're all growing in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every breath that we take, we're grow, we should be growing. Amen. And then one, one of these days, we'll take that final breath, or that trumpet will sound, and we'll go up. Glory. Clear, and then we'll get to see. All of what? <laughs> the Bible says that he's preparing. All of what he's preparing. Wow. Awesome. He says it's a, it's a place. And a lot of preachers want to argue about the place. I don't really care. He give me a cardboard uh, box in the corner on Hallelujah, Hallelujah Boulevard for all I care. I, listen, I know where I should go. And I don't care yeah. what he has in store for me in a mansion or a place or a room I don't care I get to go there that's all that matters but what really make, makes me want to be there is there's a throne room there and your mansion you can hang out in but I got a throne room that I get to go hang out with and I, I've got to hang out with him a few times it's yeah really nice. but the throne room whew. all right um I do want, to, want you to stick around for the victory service as Brother David um, uh, gets baptized here. And if you've never been baptized, you, you need to consider. You say, what is baptism? Well, this water turns into this mystical fluid that, that changes everything. No, it doesn't. It's water. We, we're gonna, we're, our water bill is going to go up. Amen. Amen. It's just how it happens. And we're fine with it. And then the sewer bill will go up too. Uh, we want it to go up as much as possible because the more our water bill goes up, the more baptisms we have. What is baptism though? It is a picture of what happened on the inside. You have to yes. be buried in Christ Jesus. Who you seen me as before, I've been risen a new creature. Yes. All right, we want you to stick around for that. Um, uh, but we understand if you can't. Uh, we know that y'all don't have, there's not many lines at Shoney's now, so you don't have that excuse. But, but all right. Now, there's lines at Starbucks. Yeah. You were sad this morning when you rolled by, wasn't you? Buddy? Broken. All right. Uh, Brother Chris, I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'm going to go ahead and get changed. If you want to change over there, that'd be fine. Well, we certainly appreciate each and every one of you that came out today. If you need to leave, please, uh, we want you to know that we hope to see you again and come back uh, at your earliest convenience. We want to thank Pastor Dave and his uh, lovely bride. They were here today. And would you please give them a warm thanks for choosing to come to service with us today? Uh, if you get a chance, we're going to mingle a few minutes. Uh, make sure you speak to them. His story is unique. How, uh, as unique as we found Christ, he found us. So uh, make sure you thank them for coming. Father, thank you for this service. As we tarry for a moment, waiting for the baptism, we pray that you would continue to move in the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls, that we would try to be that person that you would have us to be. For it's in Christ's precious name we thank you and we pray. And all God's children said, amen. Hang out if you can. God bless you.